Hi, I'm your host, Joe Fagan, and welcome to this edition of Discover West Orange. This monthly program, sponsored by the Downtown West Orange Alliance, is dedicated to raising awareness and preserving our rich local history. On today's program, we will leave the studio and go on location as we take a closer look at the West Orange community of today and a few recent events that are destined to become part of our local history. Our first two segments feature what already has become an annual occurrence, and our third segment shines the spotlight on what was a century in the making. One downtown business is helping contribute to West Orange education in a small but entertaining way. The 8 to 8 Barbershop at the bottom of Northfield Avenue helps to gather school supplies for the Washington Street and Hazel Avenue Grammar Schools by soliciting customers to make donations. It's a day-long, fun-filled event with a food-eating contest on Main Street between the West Orange and Orange High School football teams. The date of August 28th is chosen because it's right before school opens, and the date when written out is 828 or 828, which corresponds with the 8 to 8 shop's name. On a more serious matter is the mayor's 5K run along Main Street, dedicated to raising awareness for ovarian cancer. This is an annual event that began eight years ago and in recent years has partnered with the West Orange Downtown Alliance. The 5K run is the brainchild of West Orange residents Shari Beth Suskin, who herself is an ovarian cancer survivor, and she explains more on how the event originated. Since its inception, the event has grown in popularity and nearly $100,000 was raised this year for cancer research right here in West Orange. For the last few years, this event has featured an all-girl band, The Mood Swings, and they will explain why this cause is especially important to them. I talked with the girls and we had some fun while bringing attention to a serious subject. Finally, regular viewers to the show will recall a few months back we had Catherine Cusack Fernandez as a guest in the studio. She talked about the history of the Gregory School and 2014 being the 100th anniversary since it opened. Catherine spearheaded the effort to build a Centennial Plaza on the school grounds. I attended the opening of the new Gregory School Centennial Plaza this past September 19th and spoke with Catherine and West Orange resident Vicki Kirsch who conceived the original idea for the plaza and they share their thoughts on seeing it become a reality. So stay tuned as we journey into history in the making on this episode of Discover West Orange. I'm here with Jason from uh, 8 to 8 Barbershop. Jason, tell me, tell me what this day represents. 8 to 8 day is uh, coming back to school day. And so it's one of the things we want to recognize the local uh, community as well as the uh, students that don't have some of the school supplies. So initially, in the mornings, what we want to do is let people know to come in, drop off school supplies at the, the shop. And once they do that, uh, you know, we're going to have fun. We're going to have a... Uh, uh, the eating contest, and t later tonight we're going to be at Susie Q's uh, with the adults uh, to celebrate going back to school as well. So it's a day of celebration, day of recognition of. Uh, well, I can certainly attest to the fun that we had here and the camaraderie between Orange High School and West Orange High School. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about the school supplies that you collect. Who does that benefit? Uh, the last couple of years, we've gave uh, school supplies to uh, Hazel Elementary and Washington Elementary schools. Um, if there's another group that comes through that happens to need some supplies, uh, we're willing to help out as well. Uh, we've gotten supplies from Rite Aid um, and a lot of other uh, corporate uh, entities have come in and, and dropped off large supplies as well. So 
That's been very uh, helpful. Well, you're spearheading a great effort here in helping support the education of West Orange, and, and 8 to 8 is uh, has always been committed to the community, and uh, I, I really uh, take my hat off, uh, not that I wear a hat, but symbolically take my hat off to, to you and Brittany for the great job that you do in bringing the West Orange community together and, and making your presence known here on Main Street. Jason, thank you so much. Thank you, I appreciate that. Want to congratulate you guys oh, yeah. for the 2014 yeah, eating contest, 8 to 8 day. You guys ate it up today. So every 8 to 8 day we're going to be having it out here so you guys can represent next year. But this year, West Orange took it. Congratulations. Hi, I'm Megan Brill, Executive Director with the Downtown West Orange Alliance. We're very excited to be sponsoring Joe Fagan's TV show, Discover West Orange. We hope that you'll learn something more about Main Street and come back and enjoy some of the great things we have to offer downtown. We're in front of West Orange Town Hall on Main Street on this beautiful Sunday morning, and I'm here with Sherry Best Susskind. Can you tell me what, what this is all about this morning? Today we're here uh, to raise awareness for ovarian cancer. Now you are an ovarian cancer survivor. Yes, I am. And you are also the founder of this event. Tell me how that came about. Well, um, nine years ago I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. And after I was diagnosed, I partnered with the National Ovarian Cancer Coalition. And I went to the meetings and I thought, well, why don't we have a 5K? Um, I'm a personal trainer, and to me, a 5K was very natural. So um, they actually looked at me at the meetings and they said, like, what's a 5K? So I explained to them what it was, and I went to the West Orange, downtown um, West Orange Alliance, and I said, can we have a 5K? And they said they already had a run, um, but, but let's see, maybe we can partner with, you, with each other. The run, actually, that they had had been in place for a while, but it was, uh, there wasn't a lot of attendance. So they thought this would give life to it, and it has. So now you are a West Orange resident. You live here in town. And how long has this event been going on for? This event um, has been going on uh, with the, the, uh, um, raising awareness for ovarian cancer for the last eight years. Now you raised a, a very important uh, point. Is uh, You're a personal trainer. You're obviously a healthy person. And the uh, most important thing about this is raising a, a awareness. Now, when you were diagnosed with ovarian cancer, you were, for all intents and purposes, a healthy person. So that's important to expand upon that uh, ovarian cancer just doesn't affect the unhealthy. Uh, are there any symptoms? to ovarian cancer that uh, anyone can look at uh, that they should question a doctor about? Yes, one of them, which is a, a major um, symptom that women start to feel is uh, bloating. So they're feeling bloated, but they feel like it might be what they ate or something, you know, in their stomach. So they actually go to, you know, they'll go to a doctor, but they're going to see the wrong doctor. Um, obviously, they're not thinking that they have cancer right away. So um, it often takes a little time for them to figure out that it, it, it is ovarian cancer. Now, another important point I wanted to mention was we were speaking earlier, and you had mentioned that you uh, something didn't feel right, and when you initially went to the doctor, uh, it came back as uh, that you did not have cancer, which ultimately turned out to be wrong. Uh, so now, uh, what happens if a person goes, uh, what's the best uh, uh, vehicle they have to really get checked out for ovarian cancer? Well, you really have to be persistent. So I would suggest that you get to know your body, first of all. That is really, really, really important. Important. So if something's wrong, it's not feeling great, um, you're feeling bloated, and this lasts for more than two weeks, then go see your doctor. If your doctor keeps testing you and your tests come back negative, find another doctor. Find somebody else, because if you, you know if you know your body and you're just not feeling right, just find another doctor. Just because he's a doctor, you know, look, you know, you, 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 you can just dig a little deeper and go a little farther, be proactive. Now, you, are, you have been cancer-free for how long? Uh, nine years. Nine years. And uh, today is uh, a day about having fun, but more importantly, raising awareness. Well, Sherry Beth, thank you very much. Thank you for all your uh, your efforts and all you do for, uh, uh, for uh, the 5K run here in West Orange. And uh, it was nice talking to you. Thank you. Thank you.
from someone like myself who I have no singing or dancing abilities whatsoever, uh, how, how do you, as lead singer, how, how do you remember the words to your songs? I don't. <laughs> well, that's I certainly have, encouraging. I have, I have the lyrics to every single song that we sing. I, I know the songs, but I, I just like to have it in front of me. So when you're when you're singing up there, you you have you you're looking at the lyrics. So you, there's no memorization involved. I usually don't look at the lyrics, but I just I like the comfort of having them. And and, and how about uh, the musical instruments? Is there more practice involved with that? Um, I think there's as much practice. I think the issue is is we can remember some of it, and we're a little insecure when we're up there. So even though we know most of the music, we still kind of like the comfort of having it available to us to take a glance at every now and then. So it's easy to make mistakes, but I'm also certain that while you're up there, it's easy to disguise your mistakes, and no one really knows uh, no, knows that you're making mistakes. Is that true? Yeah, we'll just point and laugh at the other person next to us and take some pressure off of us if we mess up. Well, it's really all about having a good time, I'm sure. Now, do you girls do this professionally, or is this a hobby for you? Professionally. Well, it started out as a hobby, and, and you know, we've, like I said, we've been together nine years, and it's unheard of really for bands to be together that long with you know busy working families and we all have jobs and careers and we just love each other so much and we're like it's like an, another family <laughs> So what's the biggest venue that you've ever played or the most important venue that you've ever played? Uh, actually, honestly, I think some of the, this is probably one of the most important venues we ever play at because it's really close to our heart since one of our mem members is fighting um, the fight against ovarian cancer and being all women, I think we couldn't hit a cause that's closer to our hearts. Well, I, that's very well stated and I'd like to expand upon that point now. Being an all-woman band, uh, what, what kind of reaction do you normally get as being an all-woman band on the road? Well, the one good thing about it is it's a novelty. People don't know what to expect, and then when they come see us, they're pleasantly surprised. We're a lot of fun. We're very engaging. Um, we may be the most proficient musicians in the country, no, but we're very good, and uh, it's, it's very special, and it's fun. We do take it very seriously, though, as professionals. Well, we're certainly having a good time laughing doing this interview. And uh, now you've been doing this for nine, you've been together for nine years. But I, I suspect that you've probably been musically inclined or singing or playing instruments your whole life. Is Yeah, I've always loved singing. I didn't feel comfortable singing in front of people until I was in my 30s. But I, uh, I always love singing. I'm, and I play the piano, guitar. I'm, well, you, you girls do a one. I'm so sorry. I have to go see if my pocketbook's out there. Yes, okay. That's very important. Uh, that's why men carry wallets. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Much wiser. That's, that's okay. At least you were focused. <laughs> yes. Okay, now, is your pocketbook out there? It is. My husband has it. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Now, now, if it, like, what do you carry in your... My, my wife carries a lot of things in her pocketbook. Nothing that we ever need, but a lot of things in her pocketbook. Is that true? Yes. And your husband has a pocketbook? Yes. Now, uh, we were talking about... Um, what were we talking about? Musical influences? Yes. Or, yeah, and, and, and how long we've been playing. And how long we've been playing. How long have you been playing? Um, I played all through high school, and uh, then I kind of stopped for a while, and I picked it up. Um, my husband plays the guitar as well, and my, my kids have both been very musical, so it's kind of been in the family. All right, well, I want to thank you girls for uh, your commitment to this cause and uh, helping raise awareness uh, and uh, your support of your friend Jackie. And thank you for all that you do. And uh, once again, I've said it numerous times this morning, but you girls do a wonderful job. And thank you for joining us here on Discover West Orange. Thanks thank you. Thank you. I don't know why he's riding so hard.
I'm here with West Orange Mayor Rob Parisi. Good morning, Mayor. Good morning, John. What does this day represent to you? This is always a great day uh, for our downtown, for our community. We get people from all over the town, from all over this area to come together for a good cause, to run in our downtown. You can see the wonderful crowd we have, good spirits, and everyone motivated to do what they can to uh, break the silence on ovarian cancer. Now, I was talking to Sherry Beth earlier, and this has been going on for several years now, and, yeah. and, and, and she's doing a fantastic job. Uh, uh, organizing and it seems like it's gaining momentum uh, each year. What's yeah. your perspective on that? She is a she's a fire plug. She uh, from the first moment she sat down with the town a number of years ago and said, "Hey, why don't we partner with the town's downtown run, which has been here since the early '90s?" It is really taking off. It's getting bigger and better every year, and and more importantly, in addition to raising awareness, we're raising serious funds each year uh, to help in raise awareness on ovarian cancer. And that is the key to uh, ovarian cancer, or any cancer, or any sickness for that matter, is, is, is awareness. And uh, as uh, I mentioned, I was talking to Sherry Beth earlier, and she, she mentioned that uh, when she first was diagnosed with cancer, that it actually came back that she didn't have cancer. And uh, her message is to know your body and to uh, raise awareness. And uh, on behalf of the Downtown Alliance, uh, thanks, Rob, for your support and, and all the good you do for the town. Great, Joe. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Rob. I'm here with a special guest, Councilman Jerry Garino. Now, Jerry is the uh, town council liaison to the downtown West Orange Alliance. Jerry, welcome to the show. Thank you, Joe. It's good to be here. Now, I understand that you, you, your family has some personal experience uh, with cancer, not ovarian cancer. Um, so would you like to talk about that? Absolutely. Even though it was not ovarian cancer, cancer is cancer, and it has a major impact on a family. Uh, my mom uh, had cancer of the heart. And, but she made us appreciate our lives for it. And the thing was, she had education to it. She had support from organizations like this. And it helped our family through this whole process. And at the end, when she passed, we were able to accept it more willingly and to have comfort in understanding that we did all we could do. And as a community, we need to be involved in organizations like this and relays to show our community support to families, no matter what type of cancer they're experiencing in their family, because it affects mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers. And it's important for us to show our support. Well, it's so true, and it is an overlooked fact that uh, uh, the support system that uh, that can help an individual in, in, uh, in once they're diagnosed with cancer, and it is events like this that uh, not only help raise awareness but provide support to those who are going through the uh, the terrible time uh, uh, of their fight with cancer. So, Jerry, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us, and uh, thank you for all the good work that you do for the downtown line. Thank you, Joe. It's my pleasure. Have a great day and have a great run. Thank you. I'm here with Megan Brill, Executive Director of the Downtown West Star Orange Alliance. Megan, tell us a little bit about what's happening today. Uh, we're here supporting the Ovarian Cancer Coalition for Ovarian Cancer Research, and we're raising money for that cause today. Should be about $100,000 in the bank. Now, I also understand that you're largely responsible for all the organization that takes place today. Yes, we are. We had a lot of helpers and a lot of volunteers. Should we thank Paul for that? But yeah, it was really the Downtown Alliance and the Township that put the whole thing together. I think the question that everyone's asking, how did you arrange to have the good weather? <laughs> that cost me a lot of money. Well, uh, Megan, thank you so much for your efforts. And I was talking uh, to several people here uh, this morning, and uh, it, it's a great event, and uh, it's really become a, a, an important part of the West Orange community on the annual event. Thank you for all you do, Megan. Thank you very much, Joe. I'm here with Team Soar to Fly, one of the many groups that participated in this morning's 5K run here in downtown West Orange. Sean, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about your group. Team Sort of Fly was established in 2012 in honor of my mother, Lorraine Smith. Team Sort of Fly has partnered with the Blakes and the Williams to help bring awareness to a very needed cause. 
Now tell me a little bit about the picture here that Marlon is holding. Well, what we have displayed here is a 30-day campaign used to bring awareness to ovarian cancer. What we have done is solicited the help of friends, families, co-workers, anyone that was willing and able to help bring awareness to a cause. And we have taken a staple picture via Sword of Fly with the hands in the prayer highlighting the teal to symbolize ovarian cancer. As you see here, we only have 15 displayed of what was a 30-day campaign, which challenged everyone to come and help us participate in the walk today. Well, the key is uh, early detection and, and raising awareness goes hand in hand with early detection. Now, Jahada, tell me how this cause is uh, important to you. Um, it's important to me simply because my grandmother passed away, not necessarily from ovarian cancer, but from cancer in general. And I think any cause bringing awareness to cancer at all is very important. Well, thank you very much for joining us today. And I see that uh, there's a website here, soartofly.com. And uh, what, what can people find out on the website? They can see what it is that we're up to. There's a calendar, things that we're invested in and the things that we'll be partaking in in the near future. So feel free to find me at sortoffly.com or on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com backspace sortoffly. All in the name of raising awareness for a very worthy cause. Jihada, Marlon, Sean, thank you for joining us. Thank you for participating here in downtown West Orange. Thank, thank you. you. If anyone would like to contact the show, you can do so online. Here is my email address. It's very simple to remember, Joseph Fagan, my name, at westorangehistory.com. Or if you prefer the old-fashioned way, you can contact me via the downtown West Orange Alliance at 66 Main Street in West Orange. And, of course, that's the same address as West Orange Town Hall. We're here at the dedication of the uh, Gregory School Centennial Plaza, and joining me is Catherine Cusack Fernandez. Now, viewers may recall that a few months ago we had a show where we talked about the history of Gregory School, and uh, Catherine had joined us in studio on that day. And we, here we are finally at the dedication, Catherine. What does this day mean to you? Uh, Joe, this day is very important, and it's such a relief to see that uh, Vicki Kirsch's vision has come together to create this plaza in memory of the school centennial. Now, I know that several people have been involved with this. Uh, you, you may have spearheaded the effort. Uh, in addition to Vicki, is there anyone that you'd like to mention? Yes, I'd like to mention Tim Carter, who was our previous PTA president. We have also Vicki's um, co-chair, Leslie Rowe, and... Um, Sarah Kravitz, who was also involved on the Pavers Committee, and then we also have um, um, Tracy Cassidy, who was on the Playground Committee, who was a big help in helping us with all of our public um, relations and our press releases. I'm here with Vicki Kirsch, whose vision made the Gregory School Centennial Plaza possible. Vicki, welcome to the show. Share a few thoughts with us today what this day means to you. I am so humble and it's heartwarming to see the outpouring affection from the entire town and community. The school has been so nurturing to my children and to create, be involved in a neighborhood that has so much love and outpouring of affection in the bricks and to each other, it's really, um, really I'm very uh, inspired and it's exciting to see. I hope that I did it justice. I, I really hope that when I saw the plaza evolve and see the vision come to life, I um, it's it's gives me chills and it's well, really been a good feedback. Well, Vicky, you did a great job, and uh, the Centennial Plaza is going to be an enduring West Orange landmark. And thank you for all your fine efforts, and thank you for sharing your vision with the West Orange community. Thank you. I, I also want to thank you because I love the history of West Orange. I read the book that you wrote recently, and I'm inspired to live in a town that has so much history. And it's an honor to actually have everybody. And, you know, take my dream and really make it possible. So, well, thank thanks. you for your kind words, Vicki. I have always contended that West Orange is rich in local history and all the various and distinct neighborhoods that uniquely blend together as one dynamic community. The town is also rich in cultural roots across the spectrum of ethnic backgrounds, and all those who have chosen to make West Orange their home thread together in a tapestry of social harmony. Certainly the town does not exist without problems or everyday issues that need to be solved and addressed because no place is immune to overcoming hurdles to ensure stability and survival. As generations pass, our collective stories sometimes become forgotten or overlooked. But at the core of West Orange history are the very building blocks of the foundation upon which our town is built. Therefore, it is important to remember, to preserve, 
and to pass on the story of our people and community. Hopefully, one day in the future, a yet unborn generation will look back and judge us as worthy stewards of our history and further inspire them to do the same. For the Downtown West Orange Alliance, I'm Joe Fagan, and I'll see you on Main Street.